Welcome to the God of Wonders radio broadcast with Pastor Kiruba Stephen and sponsored by El Bethel International Ministries. El Bethel International Ministries may be found on the web at album.org or you may call 845-360-0534 for prayer. Now, here's Pastor Kiruba. If you look at the beginning of Isaiah 53, you'll see Jesus grew as a tender plant. Where? In the desert. In the midst of the crooked and perverse generation, as a tender plant, Jesus Christ grew. And then what happened to him? The people who were around him afflicted him. He was smitten, he was stricken, and all of those things happened because he came to be a ransom for the sins of this world. Yet, the Bible says, People didn't realize that he was there for them. We didn't realize that Jesus came for us. Even though people did not realize the blessing that was living in their midst, Jesus still continued to do good. God is speaking to our hearts today. You may feel discouraged. You might feel disappointed. Because you have helped many people. We have done good to people. And you may be thinking, Lord, what is the point of doing this to someone? What is the point of helping someone? What is the point of being there for this person and doing good when they're not even realizing what I am doing for them? You know what Jesus is saying to you today? Jesus says, they did that to me too. And I continue doing good. You do the same. You do the same. He was there. Yet, they did not realize that the path that he was going through was just for them. He came just for them. He suffered just for them. He lived among them. Yet, they didn't know him. John chapter 1 says, He came to his own and his own did not know him. Imagine, if you're in a family and you're a child in a family and your parents don't know you or the child doesn't know the parents Many times when people who have to take care of loved ones who have Alzheimer's, it's very painful when they don't know who you are. That's a medical condition. It happens. It's very painful. But when you live among people that were created by God and He's living there among them and the very people that He created they don't recognize him. Not because they have Alzheimer's, because they chose to hold on to darkness by choice. People who have Alzheimer's, they don't have a choice. Sickness came, they're not able to remember. But when sin comes in, it's a willful neglect of the Savior. It's by choice we say no to God. Light came into this world. Men loved darkness more than light. That means they saw the light and they said, we don't want the light, we want darkness. He was smitten. He was stricken. There was no beauty in him. The Bible says not because he was ugly or anything. No. He was the most handsome person ever in this universe as a human being. Even better than Adam, son of God and flesh yet for your sake and for my sake he was broken when you look at his face in the cro- cross when he was on the cross if you just stand over there and look at his face there's blood all over you really cannot see his face there was no beauty in his face why because he chose to do good And his doing good involves dying for the people. Last time we saw, a couple of weeks ago, the Lord spoke to us about doing good is helping people physically and also healing their sicknesses, setting the captives free. But today God is speaking to us a step further. Will you be willing 
to lay down your life so that someone else can live. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it's just going to remain as a grain of wheat, the Bible says. But when it falls and dies, then it multiplies. There's a multiplication that comes from where? From the depth of that one grain. If you really want to serve God, if you really want to be used of God, you should be someone who will say, Lord, I will give myself totally to whatever you have for me, which includes dying as a grain of wheat so that others can live. That's what Isaiah 53 is about. Isaiah 53 is about Jesus coming to this world, suffering and dying so that you and I can live. In order for you to live, in order for I to live, he died. He became that grain of wheat. Now, if you want the multiplication that Jesus received as a result of his death on the cross, then you need to follow his footsteps. Without that, there's no real ministry. Real ministry is following the path of the cross, following the footsteps of the Lord Jesus Christ, doing exactly what Jesus did. Jesus went around doing good. And that doing good includes feeding the people with five loaves and two fish, meeting their physical needs. His doing good includes healing the sick, raising the dead. And his doing good includes him dying for us. A good shepherd will lay down his life for his sheep. That's what Jesus did. So this Jesus Christ who grew as a tender plant and who became a person where you cannot really recognize his face. Even his own mother when she stood. Imagine how she would have felt. You can't even recognize his face. You can't even recognize his body. That's how much he was broken. Why? We go all the way to the last verse. Let's just go to verse 13, I believe. Isaiah 53. Let's go to verse 12. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. How did this verse come into existence? This word of God here in verse 12 will not be there if verses 1 to 11 were not there. It was because that his body was broken, because he was wounded, because he was bruised, because he was crushed. We see verse 12. I will divide him a portion with the great. Why? Because he gave himself over as a living sacrifice. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out his soul unto death. Who? Jesus Christ. How much did he pour out himself? Unto death till the last drop of blood. The Bible says, he loved us to the very end. He poured out his soul all the way unto death. Think about it. How much did he pour himself out? Until there was nothing to be poured out. That's real ministry. The amount of souls that has come into heaven, pulled out of the hands of Satan because of the blood of Jesus, is solely from this grain of wheat that fell to the ground and died. If you really want to see salvation of souls, you need to follow the footsteps of the Savior. If that's what he needed to do in order for people to be saved, you need to be just like him. Give your stuff over to being everything that God wants you to be, which includes dying, becoming the grain of wheat that God has called you to be. Jesus talked several times about Laying down our lives. When we understand heaven's agenda, God's agenda, we would understand the requirement that goes with it. If I don't understand the plan of God, I'm not going to understand the steps that lead towards the plan of God. I want to repeat this as the Holy Spirit wants me to. If you don't understand the plan of God, you're not going to understand the steps that lead towards the plan of God. 
if you want to become a person who would bring hundreds and thousands of souls to the Lord Jesus Christ, you should be someone who would do exactly what Jesus did, which is, not my will, let thine be done. Become that grain of wheat that God wants you to be. Laying down your life. That means, when I can choose to live here, I give that up so that someone else can live. That's called death. When I can choose to live here, I give that up and I die so that someone else can live. When I choose to give up something so that someone else can live, you call that sacrifice. Without sacrifice, there's no real ministry. Without sacrifice, there's no salvation, period. Real salvation comes as a result of someone else's sacrifice. Without sacrifice, there is no salvation. So if you really want to see souls getting saved, then you must follow the path of the Savior, which is living a life of sacrifice. It's not just enough to say, oh, he came to die for me and because of his death I'm living, which is good. But what is your life doing to someone else who is dying? If you want someone else who is dying to live, that means you should be willing to die in order for someone else to live. Now someone can say, oh, Jesus died already, you don't have to die. Well, that's not true. That's not true. Jesus died for our sins. We cannot die for anybody's sins. But we have to pay a price in order for someone to come to the fold of the Lord Jesus Christ. Laying down your life is very, very important. And Jesus said this, I want to say this. If anyone would like to follow me or be my disciple, would desire to, he's not even talking about really becoming, he said if you have the desire, if you really have the desire to follow me, hear this, that's what he said. You must, number one, deny yourself. Number two, take up your cross. Number three, follow me. Can you picture where that cross is going to lead you to? Where? Where did he take the cross and where did he go to, Jesus? Did he take the cross and just put it at, you know, in a showcase and say, okay, this is my cross, look at it? No. He carried the cross. He said, watch me display love. Watch me display love. Watch me display love. If you want to really become a display of God's love, you have to become a display of God's sacrifice. Without that, there's no real salvation. Jesus Christ said this. If you want to be my disciple, you deny yourself, which is becoming that grain of wheat that falls to the ground and dies. You pick up your cross and you follow me. Follow the Savior who carried this cross. And where did he go to? All the way to Calvary. And what happened there? There he won the victory. Now Jesus already has given us the victory by his death. But when we follow him and we follow his footsteps, we accomplish what Christ has accomplished for us on the cross of Calvary. We just simply take it. But without following the footsteps of the Lord Jesus Christ and going to where God has called us to, we cannot receive what he has for us in order for us to give to others. True ministry is, true sacrifice, true ministry is becoming the grain of wheat that falls to the ground and dies. If I feel like, oh, I don't want to lose comfort, I don't want to be inconvenienced, and I want to be a nice, comfortable Christian that can just go and speak some fancy words and sing a fancy song and give a fancy altar call. You can get 500 people to raise their hands. But have you seen mushrooms that come out when it rains, right after it rains? Little mushrooms? You can just wipe them out so fast. Even if you take a big rake, you can just pull them all out. It is of no value. But when a person really walks with the Lord Jesus Christ, follows the path of the Lord Jesus Christ, through their life, you will get a solid substance. A ministry, when tested by fire, 
will stand. That's the difference. God's word says, some build with hay, some build using wood, some build using precious stones. If you want your work that you're doing for the Lord to last, it has to be a work that is built out of precious stones. Equals, it'll cost you. It'll cost you. In order for you to build a building with precious stones, it'll cost you. It's easier to get cheap building materials and build a big mansion very quickly. But when the fire comes, which God says it will, because every work that is of man unto God will be tested by fire. So fire is not an option. Whatever ministry anyone does, it will be tested by fire. God never says, fire may come. No, fire will come. When Jesus talked about the wise men and the foolish men, Jesus said, storms come and beat that house. Storm is supposed to come, it will come. Every single believer will go through some kind of storm in their life. Not just one time, many times. But when the house is built upon the rock, the Lord Jesus Christ, no matter how hard that storm may beat upon the house, no matter how hard the waves and the winds may pound upon the house, the house will last. Whatever work that you're going to do for God, whatever work that you're doing for God, know for sure it will be tested by fire. One day, that fire will come and test the work of God. When that fire comes and tests your work that you do for God, do you know for sure that your work will stand? It should stand. If it doesn't stand, woe to us. Think about it. After doing everything, everything is burned down to ashes because that fire will come and test. It has to be proven. Write this down. Your ministry and my ministry to God must be proven. And you know how will it be proven? God will send that fire and he will test our work. If it is built out of precious stones, then it will last. How is Jesus, the master builder, building the church? By paying his price, laying down his life. Those of you who really want to serve God, really committed yourselves to serving God on New Year's Day, listen to this very carefully. You must give yourself over to Jesus Christ, which involves doing everything that he's telling you to do, which includes living a life of sacrifice like how Jesus did. If I cannot give up something for someone so that they can live, then my Christian living is questionable. If I cannot sacrifice my time, my talents, my treasure, my everything for someone to come to Jesus Christ, then my following Jesus Christ is questionable. We are called to follow him and to make disciples. Every believer has that duty, remember. Every believer. It's not just a pastor's job, not an apostle's job. It's not just an evangelist's job. It's not just the fivefold ministry's job. Every believer is called to be a disciple and to make disciples. That's the calling of every believer. So we have no excuse. We cannot go to heaven and we cannot say, Oh Jesus, by the way, that was my pastor's job. Giving up sleep and giving up food and praying for people is my pastor's job. While I sit and watch TV, or while I just go here and there, do my own thing. While I brought my soul to you, Jesus, I didn't do any sin, I didn't commit adultery, I didn't go lying, I didn't do any, I lived a good Christian life and I brought my soul to you, Jesus. This is why Jesus gave us the parable. Of the man who took that one talent and buried it. And he brought that one talent back to his master and he said, Look, I preserved it. 
that one talent didn't rot. He didn't ruin it. He brought it the way it was given to him. But what happened? What was the result? When he brought that one talent and gave that one talent back to the master, what happened? He was not appreciated for that. You know why? Because he could have done so much with that one talent. The reason why that one talent was given was with the expectation that you're going to make use of that. The reason why God has given you salvation, the reason why God has given you Jesus Christ, who paid the price for you, which is so costly, that one talent is so costly. The reason why God has given that to you is for you to multiply it, for you to reproduce, for you to bring many more into the fold of the Lord Jesus Christ. If someone is sitting here with no spiritual appetite, no care in the world, I'm not going to tell, you know, I'll talk spiritual things to Christian people, to believers, but I'm not going to bring anyone to the fold of Jesus Christ. You are spiritually sick. If you're spiritually healthy, you will multiply. And the way that you can really multiply is following the footsteps of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you want to be someone who would bring many to the kingdom of God, you need to be someone who will pour out your soul unto death. You need to be someone who would pour out your soul unto death. That's what Jesus did. You need to be someone who would give your life over to God, to his service for his people. To go about and beyond... And do for the kingdom of God. To go above and beyond. To save souls. To go above and beyond what others would do. It's not extraordinary. It's the norm. Understand. God has called everyone to follow in the footsteps of the Lord Jesus Christ. Going about and beyond should be the norm. Someone can think you're odd because you're going above and beyond. But you know what? It is the norm in the kingdom of heaven. Every Christian is called to live a life of sacrifice. Every Christian is called to live a life of sacrifice. Every Christian is called to live a life out of their comfort zone, like the Savior. Because heaven is too real. Because hell is very real. Because souls are going there every single second of the day. Heavenly Father, We thank you for the sacrificial life of your son, Jesus. May we follow in his footsteps and live a life of self-sacrifice as well, through your love and through your power, leading many into your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This broadcast with Pastor Kiruba Stephen was sponsored by El Bethel International Ministries. You may find El Bethel International Ministries at elbim.org. That's elbim.org. Or call 845-360-0534 for prayer. That's 845-360-0534.